All right, guys, welcome to more Legacy. This is going to be video number five this week. I've highly enjoyed delving into Legacy, and uh, today's going to be no different. So what do we have here? Um, today, I am going to be playing some Mono Red Prison. This deck has caught steam in the last couple of weeks after the Grief Ban, and the versions right now are actually playing um, the four mana um, initiative creature, which... I don't necessarily like, but I do like the other four drops in the deck, which are Pyrogoyf. This is a card that kind of, you know, it's kind of like a flame tongue Kavu, but it can kill whatever. And it's very good. Once you play your second, you get two triggers. This triggers on any Lurgoyf. So that also means that late game reflection of the Kikiji kit, this can kind of go nuts. Um, and I really like the One Rings as, you know, refill. Um, incredible late game shenanigans um just to give this deck a bit more staying power which is can be a problem with a deck that's looking to you know imprint chrome exile spirit guide this and that so let's have a little look at what makes this version different than previous versions because we have all of the similar stuff like the mana base and the accelerants we do get uh, another of this double-sided um land a little bit of a utility spell can kill some key lands um in the late game you can kind of break through this is just a cool little little addition three copies of that and then you know standard mana base situation but then we have vexing bauble instead of chalice so let's try and think a little bit about when vexing bauble is better than chalice of the void and vice versa so chalice of the void is historically great in the deck because you want a turn one play that shuts down a large chunk of your opponent's deck that doesn't do anything to harm your deck. So while that is still true, if you look at the deck, there's no one drops. Well, aside from the card we swap Chalice for. But with the way Magic has progressed, it's basically to a state where the fair decks are so strong, mainly because of Force of Will, Force of Negation, and Daze, that the Chalice for one, the decks that were Chalice for one would excel the most, they don't see, you know, that much play um also add in the fact that there's a lot of you know premier non one drop threats like especially psychic frog you know orkish bowmasters barrow goif uh murktide regent and all of a sudden chalice of the void is just not reliable as this tool that uh, combats the format on the other hand vexing bauble takes care of all the freak uh disruption i just mentioned and will work like as a kind of a defense grid type card just imagine you have four mana turn one um you go vexing bauble the opponent needs to either counter it or let it resolve and then you go blood moon can't get you know uncontested um with this card in play you're shutting off force of wills and dazes and force of negations for the entirety of the game um so that's kind of the logic here that we're looking to say okay so this is like a chalice for zero against you can you know like omniscience um artifact decks that's looking to you know cheat on mana and it's good against the free interaction so i really like the vexing bubble plan here um we're obviously still playing blood moons so i'm playing six moons in this list those are especially potent against eldrazi can basically end the game before we even get going then we have the best threat uh in a long time bombardiers bread and butter of fable then I play a Goblin package here, basically instead of some four drops. So I play four Goblin Rabble Master and a single cubby of Gut. Rabble Master has been proven in this deck, you know, for ages. I, I like it to close out games. Uh, a card like Gut is amazing with other stuff in play. The, this card is not a good standalone threat, but it's very good with other stuff in play, like a Rabble Master with excess token or a Fable with excess treasure. So, you, can, you know, you can sack a Chrome Mox or a Vexing Bobble. These four one mana skeletons are awesome, but I don't want to rely fully on that card. Then four cups of Pyrogoyf gives this deck pretty awesome reach. Like, if you almost kill your opponent, then all of a sudden this card is a lethal spell. As I said, the one ring for refill. And then three Furies to make sure the board doesn't get out of hand. Um, there's also a little bit of uptick in some, you know, Nadu decks, Elves style decks that I also featured on the channel. So Fury will do wonders there. Clearing the way for Rabble Master is going to be the most bread and butter in the later stages of the game. We can hard cast it, do nasty things with uh, Reflection of Kiki Jiki. So, sideboard wise, we're looking to address Graveyard. I have chosen a split of four Fairy Macops because I think that card is the most punishing because it, you know, it forces the opponent to cast their Entomb, cast their animation spell. So it steals a lot of mana away from the opponent. Um, there's an argument that if you play four Ferrimacops, you should have played four Ley Lines. 
but uh, the combination of you know the fact that I'm stealing mana with with fairy, and later in the game when I draw it, it's going to be live compared to leyline. Puts it over the top. Couple of hearses. I really want to play that card out turn one against these Demir decks and uh, take it from there. Um, they have a hard time dealing with a two mana artifact. I play five blasts, which is mainly a concession to uh, Psychic Frog. Also worth mentioning is you can do that when you have Vexing Bobble. Way harder to do when you have Chalice. And then I have some more, you know, removal spells here. Shock slash Bounce spell, and this is the most flexible sweeper of all time. Um, clean up the board when it comes to artifact creatures or simply dome the opponent or a combination of all. So this deck, I think, is pretty well set up for the metagame. I'm hoping to play against some Eldrazi's. I'm hoping to win some die rolls, and I'm hoping to dodge some show and tells. Let's see if that happens. Alrighty, we're on the play here, round one, and I was happy to see a lot of these cards, but we only have two mana, so we have to ship this hand back, which is unfortunate. That's sometimes how it goes with decks like this. Okay, so this hand is a bit better. It's not amazing. So what I can do now is keep, get rid of gemstone caverns, and then... Hmm. Which one of these lands are more likely to be good? I think it's Sundering Eruption, but both are quite bad. So pretty unfortunate when you don't have a turn one play, especially when you play the Vexing Bobble version, but I don't think going to five is, is the way to go. Okay, we're getting wastelanded here. I like, I like, it's good play by the opponent to, to try and, uh, and get us here. So now we have a, an, an interesting situation. I can, since I now drew the City of Traitors, Maybe I should play at the Ancient Tomb, because if my opponent has second Wasteland, I actually want to get that wasted over the Red Source, which is interesting. And I think it's worth, it's worth the mana investment. Let's see what the opponent does here. Zenith. Oh, Crop Rotation. Okay, it looks like my opponent's going to Wasteland me again here, trying to m stop me from playing Magic, basically, which makes our play great. So it looks like, yeah, I was about to say, it looks like Blood Moon will really do a trick on this guy. So what we can do now is go Chrome Mox, Imprint Gut, I believe, because we actually want an, the next land under the Blood Moon. So we go like this, and then we play Blood Moon, and then we have Gobble, Goblin Rabble Master next turn. My opponent will be looking to come up with some disenchant effect to get back into this game. Let's see. Play land, play rabble master, commence the beatdown. So right now I don't know if my opponent's on actual lands or my opponent's on some kind of depth strategy, but I do know that if my opponent uh, manages to kill my blood moon, I'm losing this game on the spot thanks to the dark depths coming in. It's kind of a rules interaction where since this doesn't have any counters on it, it will check and it will be bad news for me. So I guess let's play Vexing Bobble. Is there anything I can draw into here that's useful or do I actually like shutting off Mox Diamonds? I think I like shutting off Mox Diamonds, so let's just attack. Might crack it before my turn to enable Heartcast um, Pyrogoyf. I'm undecided on that one. Maybe I just shouldn't mess around with that. Maybe I'm just fine as we are, as we're doing here. Let's see. The opponent discards Riftstone Portal. Oh, wow. This is cool. So, because of timestamp here, this is now a mountain that adds uh, white. So, this is cool. I like, I like this a lot. That is incredibly cool. So, let's see. Play that one. Play Pyrogoyf. Dome my opponent for three, get in for two. So pretty happy that I left, or at least the Goblin Rabble Master left back some, some creatures here. And cool play by the opponent to stay in the game. Um, we will need a lot more help, though. I think this is some uh, dark, uh, what do you call it, like Naya Depths scenario. This is cool. The opponent has two mana now. <coughs> Sorry. Tabernacle. So. Tabernacle is now a Naya land, basically. Life from the loan back, some stuff. The opponent is looking to take five more damage. Here's Spirit Guide. I'm gonna cast that card. Then I'm gonna... Hmm, let's see. 
attack for five or attack for six? I think I should just attack for five because I, I could sacrifice the Vexing Bauble, but I think it's better to shut off, you know, Mox Diamonds that my opponent drew in the meantime. So now, funnily enough, it's not unrealistic. My opponent has, like, Besaju in hand and can kill the Blood Moon to get a 2020, but I still have enough creatures to get through thanks to the Spirit Guide there. So my opponent needs, uh, let's see, my opponent needs Plow, they need Land, which they have, they need Plow and Besaju. Then they would go Plow this, Besaju Blood Moon, get a 2020, block the Spirit Guide, go to one. But the opponent couldn't come up with it, but that, was, that, would, have been, that would have been quite cool. So let's see. I don't think Vexing Bobble is, does much of anything here on the draw, so I'm definitely going to add these Dead Gaunts, with the Gone one being 3-mana Bounce, the opponent's Married Lage, and then unless I come up with something better, I'm going to add the Hearses. But I actually think Fiery Confluence is better. Fiery Confluence can randomly swap up, like, Saga stuff. Um, can also do something against, I don't know, an early Reclaimer. Not ideal, but it's, it is something. That's the thing about this deck is you, you, you kind of you can't really answer the whole format with your sideboard. So it it has to do with the meta game, um, how the meta game is put together. Let's say the meta game is all over the place, and we had like Storm, Sneak, um, Eldrazi, Red Green Initiative, White Initiative. Like let's say we had a swath of those, then it would be kind of impossible to build this deck. So. Sometimes your, your sideboard is just going to be kind of a mess, but that's kind of the name of the game. Okay, so now there's another turn one Blood Moon, which will only leave me with one land in play, uh, or one permanent mana, and my opponent could have Force of Vigor. So Force of Vigor, funnily enough, is a card that, if I see that card out of my opponent's deck, I don't know if they're playing it, but if I see it, I can adjust for game three and think about... Um, Bobble, especially because I'm on the play there, so. Okay, so it looks like... Okay, well, Forest is bad news, but the Saga means that the Blood Moon will kill Saga on sight, which is useful, so. Definitely gonna do that. Uh, the land is not a bad draw. Let's go imprint my four drop, is that correct? Let's see. So I go imprint, land, spirit guide. Hmm. Yeah, I think it's I think it's decent to imprint the four drop here. So let's see. Play, take the damage, exile, cast Blood Moon, kill Saga on sight because of how sagas work. My opponent does have access to green mana, which is annoying. My opponent Unloads a couple of lands, plays Crucible. Okay, so Crucible is not going to be relevant here unless my opponent manages to kill Blood Moon. So, pretty interesting how that's going to go down. I draw a Fury, which is probably a bad card. So now I have to make a choice. Do I Fable or Ravel Master? I'm actually going to Fable here. It's, it's slower on the clock, but it's better for, let's say, sustained ability to keep casting cards throughout this game. Opponent with no play, so now I can discard. I, I'm actually going to discard Fury and the One Ring here. Hmm, this is cool. That's a good draw. So now I can go Smashing. Then I can go Rebel Master this turn. Next turn, Bombardiers, and I'm really putting on the pressure here. Oh, so my opponent takes three damage. They don't have any Blood Moon removal. They would have cast it. I have. They have to pass once more. Hmm, that card is... That card could be good later. Kind of a good insurance policy. So let's go Bombardier. Let's attack with everybody. I don't even know how much damage this is, but it sure is a lot. So let's see. 6, 8, 10, 12. And then I fling the Rabble Master for the win. So, pretty smooth sailing here against lands, basically just running them over thanks to good old Rabble Master. Of course, my, the, the, the Blood Moon makes it so that my opponent can't play Magic, and then I have Goblin Rabble Master to basically um, kill them dead and minimize the amount of draw steps they get before they can recover. So, 
this is kind of cool. So this is my edition. It's kind of an old, it's an old time favorite, right? So it's not really my edition, but this is what makes my version different from the versions that have popped up recently. Um, I like this because it's three mana, basically. Um, I don't want to overload on four drops. To, like, that's the worst that can happen. You mulligan, you get wastelanded. Days is live against you more often. All of that stuff combined. Rabble Master, sure, it's going to die to removal spells just like some other stuff, and it's not going to do anything sometimes. And sometimes it reduces your opponent's life total to, to zero very, very fast. So, great start. Oh, sorry, misclick. Great start to this leak. Let's uh, see if we can keep it up. Alrighty, round two here, and I get a nice message. Thank you very much. It means a ton. Have a nice match. So, what do we think of this hand? This hand has turn one Vexing Bobble. From there, it needs to draw any mana source to start casting stuff. Worth mentioning is, I will have to pitch a spirit guide to go rebel master and from there it's going to be tough so this hand is basically hoping to draw mana source to even play magic lots of bad cards i mean if my opponent's on some kind of creature deck yuri's could be insane i think this is a mulligan but yeah pretty pretty interesting how to deal with hands like that this hand is a keep so now i feel like i should this is kind of a rule of thumb like again when you're mulliganing you can remove your pitch card. Um, so now we we'll want to avoid taking damage by going tapped Sundering Eruption or Volcanic Fissure, as it were. Or do I go Ancient Tomb and kind of play to the same logic as pre the previous game where I'm basically saying if I'm going to get wasted, I want that land to be wasted. Okay, I think I've considered myself, uh, <laughs> I've convinced myself rather. Uh, and uh, Ancient Tomb it is. This looks like somebody building for the One Ring, so if my opponent has a Wasteland, I would imagine I would get wasted here. Underground Sea Thought Seas, that has blue, black reanimator written all over it. So, that is probably not good for me. Ooh, that's, this is actually cool. I didn't think about it. I've had this come up in Cube a few times, but the fact that you can you can thought seize away a mana source, so I just uh, really outplayed myself here, which is unfortunate because now I can cast zero spells. So obviously, it's way more likely to get wastelanded than thought seized. So in the dark, I think this is just fine. Okay, it looks like we're getting both here. Huh, okay, this is a tough one. The prison deck, the hunter has become the hunted. Thought Seize in the Wasteland was kind of the perfect opening against this hand, unfortunately. Okay, so Red Source lets us play the game, maybe. Let's see if the opponent can really do it to me here with an Entomb. Okay, Cycle Troll is also quite bad for me, so... The Troll is sometimes something you can deal with if you can put enough types in the yard and um, Pyrogoyf becomes big enough. That is something we can manage with a um, card like Fable. So let's see. I expect to, to get reanimated here. Also, cool little play by the opponent here going for the proactive basic island. They don't need it now, but they're hedging against getting Blood Moon, which is something I like quite a bit. So, I mean, we can get dazed here. We probably lose, but if we sit around, we also lose. So this is, this is a fine play. Also worth noting is my opponent just removed Creature from the Graveyard, so now um, Pyrogoyf is only a 2-3. Thankfully, the program keeps track of that stuff, so let's see. Brainstorm here will grow the Goyf, and then I can put Enchantment into the Art and I'm just one type away. So let's say I draw an Artifact. That's probably it, right? No, wait a minute. Three. Or five. Okay, so if I discard a creature, I actually get it to get it to a five six, um, and then I'm in kind of a cool scenario where I'm trying to dig into a land. I'm attacking first, so I play around days. I get forced. It's bad. All of that stuff. But the alternative is dying to a troll. So I'm not too worried. Generally, I'm not too worried about that when I'm when I'm under pressure. Uh, one of the worst things that can happen here is my opponent following up with something like. 
um, Sidekick Frog, because then all of a sudden my opponent has two things in play that are that are good. Right now, I'm hoping to keep my opponent honest. Uh, my opponent is digging here. The, the, the biggest problem of this situation is my opponent is very likely to find either a force or a way to produce, you know, Archon or Atraxa. All of which are not good for me. Okay, Fatal Push. So basically now I'm forced to play into days unless I draw a Soul Land on Fable. I will discard... Hmm. I'll discard Fable and Fury. Yeah, I think that's good. No Soul Land. So now I'll have to not only sacrifice the Cydia Traders, also take three damage and just fall to days. I mean, I think this is how the cookie crumbles. So pay three. Sure. The other alternative is playing Blood Moon out first, giving my opponent more time, but I didn't fancy that. So let's. See, so so far so good. We resolve the Pyrogoyf. I now have a 5 6 in play. I have a fable that's flipping. But all of the stuff I talked about before is still true. Yeah, exactly this. If my opponent does not have force, my opponent most likely has a way to put me away with Archon here. So okay, that does it for game one. I didn't I didn't exactly like how it played out, but I like how I played it, if that makes sense. So I don't want Furies. I want all my Graveyard Hate. I want all my uh, anti-yard stuff. Uh, Anti-force stuff, rather. Uh, I think I'm supposed to trim these guys, the Magus and Gut. I don't think they're amazing. Gut kind of requires me to have more stuff going on, which, is, and if I have stuff in play, it's usually a good sign. Um, I still like Blood Moon for, you know, random... Disruption turn one, but they're not amazing. Maybe that is. Oh, 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 oh. I, to I totally forgot about my blasts here. Okay. So <laughs> once I realized I have the blasts, um, I will definitely br be bringing out my blood moons and leaning into that. So let's see. What do I do about the last cut here? I have to cut one card. So this is always something you run into where you want your sideboard plan to be smooth. Um, and I think if I only played four blasts here, this sideboard plan would be kind of smooth. Um, so maybe that's something to think about. But with the situation we have at hand, what are we cutting here? Is it is it crazy to cut a gemstone caverns to cut a colorless land on the play? I'll try and cut it. And on the draw, I obviously want it in because gemstone caverns. Um, okay, well, let's uh, let's try this out. This should be cool. I have a. A lot of sideboarded stuff, so all of a sudden the, the matchup kind of changes a lot when I have so many answers. Hmm, what can this hand do? This hand can play turn one Rabble Master, and that's more or less it. Turn one Rabble Master. If my opponent has a force, I guess we take it. If my opponent has fetch line Fatal Push, I look silly. I kind of need to keep drawing lands here for this to be good. I think that the mulligan, it's kind of sad that I have to mulligan those hands, but that's just how the matchup goes. Okay, so this is a key for sure. So now I can go, uh, let's see, put smashing to the bottom, probably. Imprint the spirit guide. Keep smashing to the bottom. There is something where if my opponent counters this spirit guide, I could be in trouble, but I think we we take that scenario. Um it counters this chrome box rather. So let's see. Don't want to exile it to itself here. I want to exile it to the chrome box. So like that. Rabble. With a fairy macabre. Like this hand is fine. Obviously, there's a ton of um it falls here. My opponent just goes, you know, fetch land, fatal push. This doesn't look very strong, but I, I mean, I like this hand. You can't really ask for more. Turn one, rabble, graveyard under control, psychic frog under under control. That's just how it goes. So, interestingly enough, I think my opponent would have um, killed the rabble. Okay, they just do it now. Fair enough. Well, I got excited there for a second. My opponent is basically saying, if you play something else first main that's better, 
Um, also, yeah, okay, so I guess this is just good play by the opponent. So that is dead. I think what I'm supposed to do is play a 2-2 here, even though it's really bad. Um, but I think I have to keep up the pace here. I'm just going to, you know, roll over and die. Right now, I'm hoping to, you know, kill a goif. Then I'm hoping to disrupt my opponent's attempt out of the graveyard while I'm attacking for three a turn. So that is a very, very strong card. Unfortunately, the good thing about Macabre is it's a card that forces the opponent to actually cast a Thoughtseize, which is actively quite bad, or can be, you know, with the life loss, with the mana being spent. Um, so it's gonna, I'm, this is trying to put my opponent between a rock and a hard place. Um, if they don't um, <laughs> Thoughtseize the Macabre, I'm just blowing them out. If they do Thoughtseize the Macabre, the tempo loss is su substantial. So. The opponent did a good job here of, of basically getting rid of the actual threat and then thought ceasing. Just imagine that Rabble is still in play, th then this play becomes terrible. So yeah, more or less, uh, yeah, just a good run out, run out for the opponent here. This is also pretty cool to see. The opponent picked Pyroblast out of my hand as the hero draws another, and then wastelanded me. So they're basically saying, yeah, you're small guys, they can't beat a Psychic Frog, so... I'm going to take the Pyroblast, then I'm going to go land pyro, uh, <laughs> land Psychic Frog here. Um, or, you know, fetch land Merktide Regent, one of the two. Um, and then good luck with your Ferrima Cup. So, really strong play by the opponent here. I highly expect to, to, to see a Psychic Frog here. Ooh, the opponent missed land, so they play to that potential, I guess. Okay, okay. Well... We we continue here. Vexing Bobble. That's not bad. So let's see what the opponent does here. Oh, dismember on this that card. Oh, okay, sure. Get in for one, my opponent's at seven. So while this looks like a bad play, it's still a good investment. Because otherwise that spirit guide is just gonna keep attacking. So here's Vexing Bobble. If the opponent has a daze, they should fire it off now. Um so now, basically, no days, no force is going to happen this game, which is very good for my Pyroblast situation. I put into still missing the land drop. My clock is very minimal. I hope my opponent does not have a card like Bowmasters in the deck. Let's see. This is a, an incredibly scrappy game that I'm not a favorite to win, but we're, we're, we're trying to do our best here to see if we can get away with one. I hope the opponent has a hard brainstorm here without a fetch. It looks like it, but I mean, Troll of Casa Doom is kind of a fetch lane these days, so let's see. This lane I'm going to slow roll for obvious reasons. Until I have a 3-drop, I can deploy pretty good draw, actually, because now it unlocks a lot of stuff like Fable, Bombardiers, um, all of that stuff. Rabble. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with that draw. No troll got cycled there, so my opponent actually had a terrible brainstorm. Oh, and then they use Entomb as a shuffler. That is cool. I mean, it does the trick, right? It's not ideal for the opponent right now because time is money. Um, I have a 1-1. One, one. The opponent has 6 life. They know I have Ferramacop, so this is not very useful either. As, as the Traxa hits the bin, my opponent draws a Freshie, and that was not a land, so pretty important for us here. I'm not going to cycle Bobble. I actually think it's good for us right now, especially if I draw the 3-drop. That's not a 3-drop, but it is a land. Should I give my opponent... Yeah, I think I should. So... Play. Smashing. That's basically saying you need to wasteland me. If you wasteland me, that card doesn't do anything. Uh, that you know, then you're losing a mana source towards not that much stuff to be honest. But if you don't, then all of a sudden I can draw pyrogoyfs, one rings, and stuff like that. So I think this is a forced wasteland from the point of view of the opponent, and that is just fine with me. So. I expect my opponent to have like reanimation and forces in hand. The question is what the rest of the hand is. 
Probably Psychic Frog as well. My opponent's been playing towards the, the potential of casting the frog for a while, ever since Thoughts as so Thoughts using the Pyroblast. That's what's going on this game. Um, and now, obviously, five turns down the road, or four turns down the road, my opponent's kind of regretting that decision, but that's sometimes how it goes. You make, you make the decisions with the information you have at the time and uh, live with the results. Red Elemental Blast is a card that doesn't change a whole lot. I'm still losing to cards like Bowmaster. Um, and I'm still beating the blue part of the deck and the graveyard, so. Pretty excited for this. I'm just gonna pass here. I'm really not too worried about, um, what the opponent can do here. Let's see. Maybe I should be worried. If my opponent goes something like Brazen Borrower, like the, yeah, Petty Theft on anything, I'm gonna counter it. This is indeed a petty theft, and I will counter target spell if it's blue. I'm gonna protect my. <laughs> this is funny, like protect the queen, protect the 1 1 goblin, but it's doing work right now, and the opponent is kind of in a hurry. Here's Undercity Sewers, so this means I get my opponent to three, then I most likely uh, counter a frog, and then I get my opponent to two, and I need to get the rest of the way, which is not necessarily trivial. Um, Playing, I guess my opponent can also play Baragoyf, and now my opponent had three mana, and that's the reason the, they're hanging on to the to the wasteland. Huh. Okay, I see, I see. Let's see what this is. This is Reanimate on Rabble Master. Pretty good play, actually. Hmm. Reanimate on Rabble Master puts my opponent to two life. Uh, one life, rather. Great play by the opponent. Hmm. What do I have that gets my opponent the rest of the way here? Or gets me the rest of the way? Bombardier is game over. Hierogoyf is game over. Um, what else is game over? This card is game over. Can't block. Uh, if I draw my own Rebel Master, that's also game over. So let's see. I don't have the Furies in. Pyrogoyfs are game over. Uh, Gut is sideboarded out. All Bombardiers, obviously. All Smashings. So basically, I'm asking myself if I'm ready to lose to um, Anime Dead attracts the next turn. I don't think I'm ready to do that. Okay, opponent. You have a Rabble Master in one life, and I have a ton of outs. My opponent's wasting here. That does take away the force. Force, as in four drops. Okay, that card is gone. My opponent can now start attacking with the goblins. Hmm, I have a lot of outs here. It's, it's a tough one. If I counter that one, I can lose to the Atraxa, but I can actually... I have a few more draws here to, to actually beat it. I draw Rebel Master straight out the gate, so... Yep. Yeah, that definitely worked out. Goblin Rebel Master getting in for exactly one damage. Okay, so... We got away with... Some kind of murder there. I'm on the draw now. I will want the gemstone caverns. Uh, I will note that a lot of my stuff is getting a tiny bit weaker here. That's just how th this deck works. Um, so not not anything, you know, groundbreaking. That's more or less just stating the obvious. So I have a feeling I should sideboard out one of my four drops. I wonder which one is going to be... Hmm, so you could look at this as a group of cards. Let's say I draw two four drops. What, what's the ratio I want? If it's one plus one, I cut a pyrogoyf. If it's two plus zero, I cut the one ring, right? So, I'm trying to think. I don't have that many threats after sideboard, after getting rid of, you know, Got a couple of Magus and some Furies. 
I'm not sure that should be a an argument. Maybe it is. If I cut the one ring I'm hatching for my opponent, you know, bring in Bowmasters. If I cut Pyrogoy from hatching against getting, you know, Thought Seized and Reanimated. So all in all, it's pretty good reasons to to get rid of both. There's also a little bit of Chrome Mox consideration here. I need my red count to be good, but I think with these new lands, it's generally not a problem. Hmm. I'll try and cut a Pyrogoyf here. Uh, I think a 1 plus 1 split is what I want to draw against that deck. And I don't necessarily think I need that many threats. Let's see. Okay, this hand is cool. So let's evaluate this before we press keep. So this is always some good habits. We we think about our hand before and, and you know, before the opponent gets to react to us keeping seven, before the opponent reacts to us mulliganing. So we're basically concealing information while thinking about what to do. This is this is very useful. So this is obviously a keep. If I get rid of the smashing turn one, then I can go turn one Rabble Master, and I have Spirit Guide Red Blast. I'm worse against Wasteland. What's the old? I'm better against Days. Okay, I think I talked myself into keeping and exiling the smashing. If I do get Wastelanded, I still go turn one Rabble Master because I'm a lunatic. So. That one into play. Uh, yes. Uh, these, this should be red on... Wait a minute. So... Uh, good. I'll exile the spell. I have no idea how that works. If I exile something... Like, if I exile it, the land side of it. If it's only a colorless land. We don't want that, that's for sure. So now, as I said, my hand is playing around... Um, Force of Will, my hand is playing around. Pretty good card. My hand is playing around days. And with this draw, I'm actually wondering if I should go Bombardiers, because if my opponent has Fatal Push, I want them to kill that card. Um, because Rebel Master is a better standalone threat. I'm actually going to use that logic and go City of Traitors, Red, Colorless, Bombardier. Um, the point is, this is just a 2-2 when it's alone, right? But Rabble Master is, is better, so maybe I look like a genius here. Let's see. This could be high-level magic. So that gets killed, which is fine. That's what I expected, or that's why I made the play. And then I'm looking to follow up with Rabble Master, which is better um, if I resolve nothing else for the rest of this game, right? So pretty interesting. Is this a reanimation on Broadside? No, this is Cycle Troll. Okay. Basic Swamp, my opponent's hedging again, which is cool. Here comes Reanimate, and I will counter that with a Fairy. So, discard, exile that, and I think I'm supposed to exile my own creature here. Pretty sure about that. Okay, so get rid of those. Reanimate's fizzled. I still play around days. Um, I want my opponent to days, so I'm not going to play my land out. So, let's see. Goblin Rabble Master. Daze me, bro. I don't get dazed. I get the 1-1. One, one. Get in for damage. So now, my hand is hoping for my opponent to go, like, Psychic Rock Pass. I lose to the 5-5. Uh, five, five. Yeah, okay, that's exactly the card. I lose to that card big time. Um, yeah, that's how it goes. So, can I draw anything against that card? I actually doubt it. The one ring is a decent card. Um, so let's go Ancient Tomb. Tap for mana. Well, I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe we can do something here. The one ring. Draw. That card. Huh? Uh, the biggest problem now is I have to suicide a goblin token. My opponent gains the life. Uh, but hopefully the one ring will let me draw into... into more stuff. If I had a way to exile cards in yard, or I had another goblin, I would attack with Rebel Master. But that's not the case. Also worth noting, this unblockable type thing is maybe going to be relevant later. Let's see. So Barogoyf is amazing here out of the opponent's draw. Um, 
the life is just huge against, you know, bad decks like this. Okay, so the opponent passes here. They they kind of like the stat quo of this. Can't blame them. I lose one life. And now it's time to draw some cards and hopefully not get Bowmastered. We don't get Bowmastered, and I draw Broadside Bombardier. That is huge. Um, am I supposed to play Chrome? I think I am. So Chrome Mox... Imprint Sundering Eruption, or maybe it's Spirit Guide. Hmm. Does my opponent have Days and Force? I highly doubt it. I highly doubt it. So, for that reason, I'm imprinting Spirit Guide. Then I go Bombardier. And then I'm hoping to get to an attack step here. Force trading for Blast here would be awesome. Um, yeah, let's see if this works. I get a goblin. So now I can attack with everybody and fling the Rabble Master at the Baragoyf before blocks. So, like this. Already creature in the yard, so I'm not growing the Goyf, which is cool. Let's see if the opponent can do anything cool here to grow. They can't. Oh, very, very good exchange for me here. Uh, and then, got it. Now the opponent has Revolt. This is huge. The opponent did not have Revolt until now, so that is alrighty. I get rid of the Barogoyf. I get in for two. I'm holding up. Um, there is a case for me to go... Chrome box here to play around randomly drawn days. So I'm actually gonna do that. Not I this this play is not ideal, but I think it's a decent hedge. Alright, so we have an active ring. My opponent will look to reanimate something new, but it doesn't like they have one card. Two cards that we don't know about. Your sewers. I have everything blue locked down. Any, like, exchange is good for me here. And I don't get reanimated. Whew, this is huge. This is huge. I really like our position now. My opponent did keep a card on top, though. So maybe we need a little bit of help from the One Ring. Let's try and draw here, because we play a lot of haste creatures. Hmm. These cards are not super useful right now. Um, so what can I do here? I can go the One Ring, Legend Rule out the other one. Is that even good? I mean, I guess. Um, the One Ring Legend rule out the other one. Okay, so. The One Ring. Keep that. Draw right away, because I could draw into a 3-drop. I did not draw into a 3-drop, but I have um, protection from Ancient Tomb. And I can play Hearse here. There is a good chance my opponent just kept reanimation on top of the deck. Like, this would be huge. Let's see. So, Hearse resolves. Still have Fire Blast up. This is quite interesting. I think I misplayed. I should have held up a Chrome Mox instead of a Caverns. With that being said, there's almost zero chance my opponent has Wasteland at this point and wouldn't have fired it off already and just kept the card on top. That is even less likely to be a Wasteland. So, actually, I, this is probably not going to matter, but in general, it's, it's, your 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 mox is less um, vulnerable, right? Hmm. So I think this is a case where I should I should uh, blast because my opponent could simply draw into enough, you know, black cards or two good blue cards, and I'm actually interested in the time walk here. Okay, looks like my opponent is throwing in the towel here. I uh, I'm really happy with uh, with how I drew here, and obviously also how I played. Like, poof. Baragoyf was just so good. I was lucky to draw the ring. Then I basically had to do a little bit of graveyard math. I used the Bombardiers to get rid of it while sitting on the Pyroblast for the whole time. Um, and then the one ring basically did its magic. And uh, what do you know? We're 2-0 we're and here after things have looked very, very grim. I'm uh, very happy with how, you know, the one ring and Pyroblast just... They're not really cards you normally... Uh, you know, think about when you're talking about Mono Red Prison, then it's like, oh, Chalice, Blood Moon, Trinisphere. But this actually just shows we can play with the big boys uh, and we can use 
Ancient Tomb to power out the One Ring and, uh, yeah, go toe-to-toe with the best deck in the format, in my opinion. So, pretty cool, pretty cool. Let's uh, see if we can keep it up. All right, round three. My opponent has revealed a companion, which is, I don't know, something maybe I should know about. Um, hmm, what to do here? I feel like I should just keep this and cycle some baubles. I mean, bobble could be amazing. Um, I'll go Chromox, Imprint Fury, play two baubles out, which is kind of funny. So, Imprint, Bobble, Land, another bobble, and then we can kind of go from here, having somewhat consistent three man in play and a deck full of three drops, so maybe we're shutting down some stuff on the side of our opponent. Giganta. Is this some kind of a Naya Depths deck? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so that deck can actually companion Giganta. That's that's pretty cool. Ooh, nice draw. Broadside Bombardier the draw. So I will kill Reclaimer. Get in for two. What a draw. That was huge. That was like, yeah. Very, very impressive draw. Let's see, if my opponent has a plow, we're kind of back to where we started, but trying to, you know, spike some three jobs like the Bombardier. This can be tough, the opponent starting on a forest as well, building some mana base. Also, a weakness of this deck is just opposing medium-sized creatures can be quite annoying. So I guess Pyrogoyf and Bombardiers kind of help that cause a little bit. Let's see what this is. Looks like a Green Sun's Zenith to me. Oh, crop rotation. I'm trying to think what the opponent would go for. Is this just my opponent fixing white mana and killing Bombardier? Maybe it could be like the l least impressive crop rotation of all time, but sometimes that's what you need to do to get the job done. Okay, so it looks like I am on the clock here with... Uh, Hyga and Heath getting back into the opponent's hand. Uh, Blood Moon? Uh, draw a card. Smashing. Hmm. Might not be the best. So, am I supposed to just... I was to say that. Am I supposed to just dome my opponent here and limit the amount of turns they have? I can see that, actually. So, another bobble, land, attack, fling a bobble, uh, basically get in for five. I think I'm supposed to try and shorten the lifespan of the opponent here. Opponent is dredging, okay. So funnily enough, a card like Maze of Ith actually buys reasonable amount of time here. So now, sure, I can deal three damage from a bobble, but that's not really, you know, that impactful. So I'm going to draw. I think that's correct, simply because I have so much good stuff to hit here. That is not one of them. Um, still feel like it's more useful to have that card in hand than in play. So I'm just going to go Ancient Tomb. Not going to bother attacking. Trying to be a good sport here. The opponent will Maze of it. I'm not going to fling... Uh, Chromox anyway. Let's say I had a Fury, then of course we attack, because that's what, you know, enables the boast. Hmm, okay, so it looks like my opponent is just searching for the the Dark Depths, and they don't have it already. I have a lot of, like, Pyrogoyf, is that, is that just game over on the spot? Let's see. Oh, Ultima Yard is kind of funny, I didn't realize until now. So, Artifact, Sorcery, Instant, Enchantment, Creature. Yeah, I think Pyrogoyf is just GG's on the spot, let's see. Blood Moon could be quite strong. Um, hmm. Okay, I guess I just jam Blood Moon. Jam Blood Moon. Kind of force my opponent to, you know, respond, fetch a pl basic planes, and play normal magic. Stuff like that. Also, if my opponent ha has, you know, a crop rotation, I just lose. We can't do anything about that, so. Okay. So yeah, my opponent is some Naya Depths type deck. The red is usually stuff like, I don't know, maybe Minskin Boo, maybe Pyroblast out of the sideboard. Used to be Punishing Fire. 
Let's see. That resolves, which means now Bombardiers can attack and actually get in for damage. Am I supposed to fling the Chrome? Uh, right. Okay, so my opponent Besejus. I can fetch out a land, and then my opponent can Maze of Ith. So, this is not disaster, but very annoying. My opponent's deck is now back on. Dredging... into some annoying cards here, including Urza Saga and Echoing Deeps, which I believe copies a lane from a graveyard, so it doesn't do anything right now. Talon, not really useful either. Pretty, pretty cool. I love when all of these like new utility lands make it into Legacy, because a card like Crop Rotation is always going to be there, so whenever you know more good lands are printed, that card gets better. That's more or less the reason why they had to ban uh, Birthing Pot in Modern, because that would really limit you know, the, 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 the creatures they could print in the future, so kind of the same with Green Sun Zenith being banned in Modern, all of that stuff is just cards that get better over time. Life from the Loam, those three boys, sure. The clock is kind of ticking on me here. Pyrogoyf, One Ring, Py Pyrogoyf, so basically what I do here is attack. So now it has boasted, and then... Oh, wait, 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 wait. All combat damage, that's very important, because I'm about to do some other kind of damage here. So let's see. One, two, three, four. Pyrogoyth. Deal six. Sacrifice Pyrogoyf. Deal another six. Let's see. The opponent's having a read here. Oh, I just realized Soul Guide Lantern can get rid of Artifact, so that then I can only deal my opponent 5 with Pyrogoyf. So funnily enough, Soul Guide Lantern does not, you know, it's only the opponent's graveyard. If this was Nile Spellbomb, the opponent could actually shrink the Goyf. But this is, a, <laughs> this is funny, you know, the opponent can get rid of 4 Artifacts in my yard. And that just means the opponent takes 5, goes to 6, and then I can fling it with Bombardier for the last 6. So pretty funny math situation here. Bombardier getting the job done. Okay, Naya Depths. So what I'm going to do here is, of course, add these two guys. And other than that, I don't think it's super clear what I'm supposed to do. Um, the thing is, the card Fury is not very impressive, but it does combo with Bombardiers. It does, you know kill an early reclaimer or something like that. So I think the obvious swap is like that. And then the question becomes if I want my confluences. I think maybe fire confluences is better than a couple of vowels. So I guess we do like this. The alternative would be a couple of hearses. Let's see. Hearse is good against knight. But not really because they still get to search their stuff. Hearse is playable against the card life from the loam. So it's basically... Do I want a card against Life from the Loma? Do I want, like, this generic random card that can, you know, finish the job, sweep up some Saga tokens, this and that? I think maybe I'm fine. Also, this is red. It's just a Chrome Mox, so a little bit of um, back and forth on whether the card is worth it. All right, up a game here. Pretty happy with how that one went. went I mean, we, every game we play, we see why a card like, you know, the One Ring, why is that good? Why does it add in a cool, also, mid-sentence? I noticed my opponent has 61 cards, which is interesting. I'm trying to... Yeah, I'm trying to say that the newer additions to this deck, they just have so much more staying power, like the One Ring, Pyrogoyf, Bombardiers. It's just... I remember back in the day, we had to play, like, Arc Slugger and a terrible double friction mana uh, costed Shivan Dragon. We had to play some bad werewolves at some point. I mean, I think if you still if you go to MTG Tab 8 today, the deck is probably still named Dragon Stompy, and that's because we used to play 
you know, some terrible dragons in this deck. Um, but yeah, these days, this deck is definitely has taken it up a notch here. So, speaking about taking it up a notch, is that is that what I'm supposed to try and do or keep? So, what I like to do when I'm, when I'm evaluating opening hands is, so sure, first of all, what can we do, right? And then we have to play to the deck's potential afterwards. So, we can't do that much. We can play turn two Fable. I mean, that's fine. So, in a perfect world, we get to kill turn one Reclaimer off a dead, Mountain dead, and then next turn we go Spirit Guide, Smashing, play three drop, and then we kind of play from there. So, this is not absurd. This is just slow and steady wins to race um, compared to taking a mulligan. So, I favor this over a like the the, the random six card hand I, I'll end up with. The opponent goes Yavimaya Go, which is not necessarily a dangerous play. So, hmm, this is interesting. I draw the mountain, which makes me believe I'm probably supposed to go mountain go because then I have the flexibility of killing something end of turn if I need it. Um, well, I'm not wasting my mana. Let's say I don't draw the mountain, then maybe I want to go taps uh, smashing. But even then, I'm not convinced because then Wasteland comes into the mix, and yeah, this is just better. So I'm going to go mountain go here, and I hope to catch a creature with my dead gone. Then I hope to deploy a three drop and basically aim uh, head for the races. Interestingly enough, what does this represent? Why would you ever crop rotate turn one? If your hand has something like Ancient Tomb, you want to get your Saga into play, that would be annoying. Other than that, I'm not sure I see it, especially against my basic mountain opening. So I don't expect my opponent to have a play here, but who knows. Also, I have to think about the card Force of Vigor in this sideboarded game. Especially, oh wow, this is this is awesome. The opponent did not reveal companion, so I'm pretty sure that means force of vigor. Pretty interesting. So here we kind of see why a card like Yavimaya, Urborg, those those two lands are awesome. It turns uh tabernacle into a green source, that's pretty awesome. I draw another land. I think I'm supposed to go fable here because that card, you know. If it gets killed, it leaves behind a 2-2. If a 2-2 gets killed, it leaves behind the enchantment, all of that jazz. So, like this. I will note that Tabernacle is mildly annoying here. Here's Dark Depths, which basically means I can't go Blood Moon, and then I can get kind of crushed by Vigor. So, let's see. I do have the Dead Gone, which is pretty nice. Uh, pay one. Yes. Then I have to discard two. I'm actually going to discard that Magus of the Moon, even though it might be... might look silly. So yes, discard the Magus, and... Is it Gut? Hmm. Maybe a land, actually. So maybe, like, that? Sure. Draw into some decent stuff here. Um. Let's see, is there any way for, for my opponent to go... Yeah, if they have a crop rotation, they're building a 2020. So I think what I'm supposed to do is go land. Take the damage. Hmm. Then I'm going to attack here. I'll get the treasure. I'll kind of bait my opponent into making the 2020. That did not work. Then I'm going to Chrome Mox with, I don't even know. Is it just Blood Moon? Am I, am I just supposed to? Yeah, I'll try this. Basically, now I'm saying you have Force of Vigor in your deck. I don't want Force of Vigor to blow me out. So I'm going to pass a turn here because I don't want to lose to Crop Rotation. Hmm. Yeah, this is... Quite an interesting game. The thing is, if my opponent has experience with the matchup, they know what's going on here between uh, with Dead Gone. Let's let's see. So now the opponent loses a lot of stuff, and I can bounce the Merit Lage. I will do that right away because of cards like um, 
you know, um, what do you call it? Sejiri step. So crop rotation into another Sejiri step would be a disaster. So pretty interesting situation here. When my opponent sees me take three damage, my opponent sees me chrome. Yeah, I don't know. That, that was kind of a weird one. Um, but maybe the opponent figures with, with the loam, they just have another go at it, right? So, wow, nice draw. I think that more or less ices the game, but I've been, I've been wrong before. So let's see. Uh, here, let's see. I think, feel like, let's see. Um, can we do anything cool here? Yeah. So I think I just got this turn and then next turn I, um, bombardier. So gut attack. So the cool thing is, if I didn't have a treasure already, if I stack it like this, I mega treasure, then I sacrifice, right? Um, with that being said, am I supposed to play out Bombardiers this turn? Or is it helpful for me that my opponent does not know that it's coming? I actually have a feeling that's the case, so let's try this. Get in for six. The next turn, I can, yeah, I can just do a lot of stuff. Like I have so much damage here between like reflection, just copying a skeleton, um, reflection, copying bombardiers. In my case, this is a lot of stuff that I'm pressuring my opponent with. Even just on board, if I sacrifice a treasure, I'm dealing, you know, enough damage. Oh, right, right, right. The tabernacle is still in the mix. All right, fair enough. That gets wasted. Sure unclear what the opponent can do here because I can just pay for my four things. Okay. Well, I think I'm supposed to um, debt that card end of turn. I think I have lethal then. So, debt the reclaimer. If my opponent has a crop rotation, they can uh, grow the yard enough, but it's not the case. So here we have Four triggers. I will pay for all four and attack for lethal. Pretty, pretty cool game. So yes, 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 yes. Um. Interesting. So let me play the Ancient Tomb. I think it's better to just attack rather than copy. So let's do that. My opponent has a green mana to work with. So in theory, that could be like Glacial Chasm or whatever it's called. Um, like crop rotation into Glacial Chasm. That would work. Let's see. Attack with those boys. Get the treasure first. Because my goal is to sacrifice the treasure and uh, see what my opponent feels like feels about 14 damage they feel like that okay okay so we have some kind of a game here um oh maze of ith maze of ith take 10 okay maze of ith take 10 that definitely will Enable the opponent to survive a turn. I'm trying to think about, do they have a way out here? I don't think so. Yeah, the game's just over here. Okay. Pretty, pretty cool run out here. Dealing with the Merit Lage while keeping up the pressure. Staying conservative enough to not die. And then, you know, pounce. Once I kind of bought myself that time. And part like Gut just shows why it's such a good snowball threat that will... Like, these guys are just so annoying. All right, what do you know? We're 3-0. and That means the video gets to keep going. So, uh, yeah, round four coming up. Okay, let's go. Round four with 3-0 and with Mono Red Prison. Super excited for that one. And uh, this hand looks kind of cool. So what can we do here that is meaningful? I can go turn one Chrome Imprint Smashing. Then I go Vexing Bobble. That is not bad. That's kind of a force of will check. And then I can go turn to gut. Yeah, I mean this 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 should be this should be fine. Um definitely some issues. Let's say our gut just gets plowed or whatever. Definitely not ideal, but let's see. So 
Pro Mox. Imprint Smashing. I think that's just better because Hardcast Fury might be a thing down the line. And then maybe I'm just supposed to play this land out, actually. Yeah, let's play this one out. Okay. So, decent opener here, shutting off the blue stuff of the format, shutting off opposing chromes, pedal, whatever, and, uh, let's see, Eldrassi Temple, and a Lord, okay. This could be a, this could be a fun one. I draw an Ancient Tomb, which makes it so that I can go Gut into Hardcast Fury next turn, which I really, really like. So the the fear here is that the opponent goes Soul Land Thought Nut Seer. Get rid of your fury. And now I kinda have to battle battle those guys. Step one. Ibukin is so busted when you think about it, because it it's a card that lets you cast like two three drops now. So it's not just a soul land, it's a minus two on all your stuff. So the Lord getting in there, I'm going to accept. Let's see. Okay, the opponent with no follow-up. I quite like that. I don't think I can... I'm in a position to crack my bobble in this case because my opponent could have... Um, wow, I draw Blood Moon. Does that? I was about to say, I can't do that because my opponent could be slow-rolling pedals and stuff. Blood Moon is insane here. I don't think I can give up a Blood Moon. Wow, but ah, this is so tough. I'm kind of going all in here on this Blood Moon, but it's just so good. I think maybe I just made a mistake. What if the opponent has um, Kozilek's Command? I think I just made a mistake here. So what happens if I attack with the gut and I sacrifice the chrome mox to get a 4-1? Is that even good? I think I just made a mistake there. Okay, well... Yeah, I should have, I should have seen that coming. Because if I, if I think about the Kozilek's command, I cast Fury, get rid of the Lord, then sure, the opponent has... But it's 0-1s. Yeah, that was bad. Okay, yeah, that's a good lesson, that if the Eldrazi deck passes the turn there with that much mana available, it's Kozilek's return, uh, Kozilek's command, rather, so definitely not ideal here. If I attack with Gut, I'm going to sacrifice Chrome. No, maybe I should sacrifice Bauble. Then I trade with one spawn. I have a 4-1 skeleton attack. I feel like this. I have to attack here. Well, I don't have to, but I think it's good. So now I'm basically letting my opponent play zeros out. I don't know. I think I, I, think I messed up this game. So now I'm just one land away from casting the Fury. And I'm actually putting on some kind of pressure. Yeah, the problem is... My opponent now knows they, they need the spawn tokens. So now they have one, two, three, four, five mana, minus one. So not enough for a seven, which is very important. Um, with the bobble being gone, it means any red card or any land will allow me to fury away the opponent's board and most likely win the game. My opponent is saving up towards seven, seven mana here, which is quite obvious. Um, land or red card? That is indeed a red card. So I think what I have to do here is because of, let's see, can my opponent do anything nasty with Kozilek's command? I don't think so. Um, hmm. Let's Fury here. I'm trying to think about the advantages of Furying now and Furying 
later, but I couldn't come up with it. So 2 one, one because the Lord is gone, that's going to kill the small guys as well. And then I intend to sack the Chrome Mox for another skeleton here. Let's see if there's anything I hadn't thought about. This is basically where having a lot of games, I should maybe cover Eldrazi next, because then I'll learn it from the inside, which will help me when I play against it, because this sure wasn't pretty. The opponent seems to have a play here. If that's Kozilek's return, it's annoying, but I think I'm going to be fine. So let's see. Okay. Looks like the opponent just wants three O ones here that can, you know, make mana. So my opponent has seven drops unlocked here. I can basically freely attack, put on a ton of pressure. My opponent is scrying here and drawing a card. So Fury resolves, gets rid of the Lord. I attack with my crew. I sack the Chrome because I'm all in here. And I put my opponent under a ton of pressure. My opponent goes to four. So what does that mean? I don't even know. Is there a reset button in that deck? Like, this is not modern. The opponent does not play all his dust. Pedal is unlocked. Sure. Now the opponent has 8 mana. What can you do with 8 mana? Need to deal with a couple of menace guys. If I draw anything like Chrome, Vexing Bobble, any creature, Gut is going to send another skeleton at the opponent. So really pressure is on here. Looks like the Kozilex command last turn could have killed Gut, right? Exile target creature, yeah. Could have killed Gut, but yeah, let's just see what the opponent has in store here. I wouldn't put it past me to overlook an obvious play here. But here's Myco spawn, which will... I'm not quite sure what we'll do. Um, the opponent can find a, a land that... Okay, so that is a green source. So now what? The opponent currently has four blockers. That's enough for to block two skeletons. If the opponent starts messing around with more, they're going to be in trouble against the skeleton's uh, menace ability. If I draw anything, anything I can play on my first main phase that isn't an enchantment or a land, I can send a third skeleton with gut. Worth noting is gut can't sacrifice itself. Oh, so it looks like the opponent is kind of in trouble here. And I draw the Spirit Guide, which is a piece of cardboard I can sacrifice to send three guys. And that'll do it for game one. Okay, that was very lucky. Yeah, that, I wish I played that turn better. That's always the what I'm looking for, is trying to play as well as possible. Winning is cool and all, but... I want to learn and play the best. So the good thing is, when you do that a lot, you also tend to win a lot. So I, I like focusing on that a bit more. Um, so this is basically the matchup that I talked about in the previous segment, like in the uh, intro, that I basically wanted out of this deck. So that also means we're pretty well set up in the main deck already. There's something like Fiery Confidence for one against the small guys that kind of is interesting to me. Um, with that said, Fury does a similar thing and is better with, you know, Heartcast, Bombardier type scenario. Maybe this is just a zero sideboard. No, 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 no. Bobble's on the draw. Okay, so that one for sure. Do I just want... So let's see. Flesh Wrecker is a 2-2, so maybe that is exactly the reason that Dead Gone is a serviceable magic card instead of uh, Vexing Bobble on the draw. Then you can consider on the play if you want to edge a little bit with a couple of Vexing Bobbles. Let's see. Okay, this ain't is fine. We have sustainable mana and stuff to do. No Blood Moon type shenanigans, but that's how it goes. Devour, a little bit of pregame shenanigans here. I really have to, have to say that the, 
the R and D team basically did a great job with MH three. I think that those those guys get a lot of flack for getting you know point five percent of all cards wrong, but I really don't think it's a problem. Um, hmm. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Now I'll actually use my superpowers and go to a stock list of Eldrazi to find out if I just drew a Stone Rain. How many copies of Wastes can you run? Oh, they play Forest, so I didn't. Okay, never mind. <laughs> um, so let's see. Opponent with that turn one. It's not super scary. Could mean turn two Thought Nut Seer. I think no matter how you slice it, I'm going to be happy with a Fable in play here. So maybe I go that one, pitch, I don't know. Spirit Guide, maybe? Soul Land, Fable of the Mirror Breaker. And then while my opponent takes the turn, I'm just going to find a random Eldrazi deck. Let's see, I saw Petal last game. Could be this one. No, I guess not. This deck is... Wow, what's going on here? What is going on here? My opponent just doesn't do anything. I feel like with this run out, I can discard two lands and expect to get one, uh, like, next. I did not, which is kind of annoying, but it, it it's fine. Um, so maybe I play Rebel Master out? Or, or maybe I just play Blood Moon out, because that card is amazing. Yeah, I guess we play Blood Moon out. Attack for two, get a treasure, build slowly but surely. I wonder what the opponent was doing with that keep. What would make you keep a hand like that? And you even kept the card off of Devourer, but this is only two mana now. Okay, so you play out a random 2-2. Two -two. Sure. I draw Smashing, which is a land that lets me have five mana here. That's basically enough for a three drop first main, three drop second main. One, two, three, four. Okay. So, hmm. I, what I can do here is I can fury away that guy, get Rabble Master going, and play Bombardier second main. Let's see. What can the opponent do about that? Probably nothing. Uh, yeah, I mean, let's Fury, Pitch, Fable, I don't even know, I, I don't even know if this is strong, I mean, I just don't know how I can lose this game, so maybe this is a, oh, I think I messed up here, one, two, ah, <laughs> magic too, too hard, so play that. Play Rebel Master. No three drop second main phase. So, okay, well, that's how it goes. So they have to attack because of Rebel. Get in there. Next turn. Yeah. I don't know what the opponent did here with that keep. Um, so basically, here, I mid mid turn, I forgot about the Blood Moon. I thought I had six mana available this turn, but I only had five. Um, so. That was definitely not super well executed. I think there's even a case that I'm just supposed to say, sure, if you want to trade off the Shaman, whatever, I have a Fury that I can copy next turn with a Reflection. I mean, I think that's just better. I don't think I played this game particularly well, but it was, it was enough to get the job done, and uh, sometimes that's what you have to tell yourself. But it's also important to, you know, how could I have won even more convincingly? That's something I, I care a lot about these days. How could I have put up a better fight when I'm losing, and how could I have won more convincingly when I'm winning? So. Definitely some areas to improve here. That also means we're, we'll be playing for the trophy next round, which is, you know, always a delight. So, uh, yeah, you don't want to miss it. See you soon. Okay, round five, playing for the trophy. That always feels just good. Uh, and so does this deck. It has really delivered and shown explosivity, prison lockdown, shutting, shutting down the opponent's, you know, draws with fast clock, but also not losing to... Uh, disruption all that much, like, just super awesome, and, uh, yeah, the hand is cool, I have turn one Blood Moon, my opponent will get a turn first, though, so not, you know, the actual nuts, Angus MTG, uh, maybe we could try hard here and scout our opponent, Angus MTG, what are you up to, my friend, Painter?
Rat row. Lots of goblins. Engineers and of the welding kind. Five blasts. Uh, you do play Saga, so... I mean, Blood Moon is not necessarily bad. Let's just pitch the Spirit Guide, I guess. That is kind of, you know... The easy one out here, once I have my mana established and my opponent does not, you know, interact. Oh, nice Painter deck. Never mind. <laughs> so, of course, the opponents can change decks, and then all of a sudden, you can end up in a bad scenario where... Your anti-maneuver really didn't pay off, so let's see. Vexing Bauble. Interesting. Am I willing to delay my plans? I think the answer is no. Um, am I willing to go... Let's see. Turn on Fable. Maybe turn one fable is fine. One of the reasons is my opponent will not know about the blood moon. Maybe they fetch like under CD sewers. Maybe they go for some dual type shenanigans. Maybe they think that's going to be fine because I have a force of will. And fable is kind of this unassuming card. And then I can, you know, hit them with the vexing bubble into blood moon. That's kind of what I'm hoping for here. So, okay, Tundra is a cool one. So, we could be, oh, stifling that I get a 2-2. Two -two. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. So I'm probably up against some Dreadnought deck, and that is definitely not good news. Um, I think that matchup can get very, very complicated. So, so now I think I discard Chrome, and ooh, it's kind of iffy, actually. Let's see. Play Bobble, play that, play Moon. So I actually want the City. Maybe I just discard the Chrome. It always feels wrong when you only discard one card, but I actually think I, I like the rest of my hand, so... Okay, I draw that card, so... Maybe I go... Bauble... First? Yeah, this this looks good. So, Vexing Bauble, which shuts off Force of Will, Force of Negation. And White Spells will get shut off by the Blood Moon, so that's kind of my... I'm hoping for that one-two punch here. Funnily enough, a card like Stifle can actually interact. Okay, the opponent responds with Brainstorm. That's kind of what you're hoping for with, um, with a card like that is, that the opponent kind of goes out of their way, the sense of urgency goes up, and either it, you know, dead cards in the opponent's hand and for the remainder of the game off the top of the deck, or it's like one mana, him to tour, I guess, as I love to call a card that, you know, prompts a force. Um, so funnily enough, if the opponent has days, they could have maybe caught me off guard here a little bit. I guess not, actually. It's all good. Just go City of Traders with one floating. So hard cast days would not do anything here. So let's see. Bobble. The opponent will force a will to bobble, which is totally fine for me. Um, I definitely like that. So now I'm going to play around days by going City of Traders. Floating one colorless, playing out Blood Moon, and passing the turn. So overall, pretty good turn here. I'm, I'm hoping I'm shutting off my opponent's white mana here. That's kind of the point of this play. Clearing the way with Bobble, playing Blood Moon, like I, like I talked about when I evaluated my opening hand. Blood Moon resolves. My opponent's out of white mana. My opponent's playing Mono Blue, which is enough to go Stifle Dreadnought. Um, so definitely not out of the witch yet by any stretch. Uh, the cool thing is I'm going to keep up the pressure with my land drop, playing around days. Um, and I'm going to flip my Fable into a Reflection, and then it only takes very little, um, you know, to, to copy a Rebel Master and get the job done. Bombardiers is also a great one. Rebel Master is better, however. So let's go Rebel. My opponent needs an actual Force of Will to stop it. Daze does not work. And I'm attacking here. So... Right now, I'm trying to go wide, but the main problem being, okay, well, I guess I guess I take this, because this is going to leave me with one more turn of doing stuff. The opponent concedes here. Wow. So let's see, how much damage is this, this actually next turn? Let's take the Brombadier out of the equation. 
because the opponent is conceding to what's already in play. I get another gob. Well, I make a rebel master. Then I get two goblins. That puts me to three tokens, two actual rebel masters. Then I attack. They're both attack for two plus four. So that's going to be six plus six. And from there, the opponent has no combat between, you know, even just building two dreadnoughts is not going to cut it. So, whew, super sick game one win here. Basically, thanks to Gemstone Mine accelerating my game plan and thanks to probably the sequencing I did actually with the turn one fable that wasn't really consequential and then the card Blood Moon to, to take it home here. So, pretty excited about that one. Sideboarding is going to be a bit tricky, I feel like. I feel like Blood Moons are not going to cut it once my opponent is on the play and know what's going on. So, I'm actually going to cut the moons. Um. Furies are probably also quite bad. So let's see how much I can actually bring in. I do like all the blasts. I like all of these because it's like, you know, you know, bounce a dreadnought is useful. Maybe kill a uh, doorkeeper thrall. Um, this one can kill a couple of dreadnoughts off. So worth noting is I cannot blast a um, null drifter because of how. The void works, so I think if I just cut Fury, because they don't present that many small creatures, and if they do, my ETB is shut off, and all the moons, because I expect my opponent to be straight up blue-white and have the ability to simply circumvent it, so I'd rather have the Blood Moon, you know, be a bit awkward for the opponent when it comes to fetching out different stuff, um, than actually having the Blood Moon and trying to get lucky, but as you can see, as you saw in the other game, shutting the opponent off white was very good, so... Yeah, I don't know. Basically, a judgment call here. So, up a game, round five. Super excited. For both this video and this deck in general. It looks very, very promising. So, just a quick reminder. What I did when I saw the, the deck list was basically cut four drops from it. Because that deck had so many four drops in it. I think it had 11. Like, four initiative creatures, four... Um, Hieroglyphs, three rings, that was just a lot. And I basically lowered the curve with Rebel Master and Gut, so... Uh, and a couple of more Magus of the Moon to hedge even more against Eldrazi, so... I did a little bit of tweaking, so... Let's see. This hand has a Sundering Eruption, which is decent. Then I can go turn one Bauble off of that one. Then I'm kind of soft to Wasteland, but I think that's just how the cookie crumbles. Um, the Vexing Bauble... I think I have to play it out, shut down, you know, Days Force, etc. Bad thing about that is I might not have Hyroblast up for turn two if my opponent goes Dreadnought Stifle, and then I'm basically just losing, so... Yeah. Let's see how it plays out. That's a pretty important lesson that you can... You, you try and check as many boxes as possible, but it's impossible to check all boxes, so... We try and make, you know, educated guesses... Finding a good balance between optimizing our own stuff and playing defensively against what the opponent can have. We basically just use that knowledge to sculpt our plan. Um, so let's see if that pays off here. Polluted Delta Pass is always scary. Could be anything. If I draw Basic Mountain, I'll be pretty happy. If I draw another, you know, one of these three damage ones, I'm insulate against Wasteland a little bit, so that would be fine as well. A card like Spirit Guide would let me play around days better. Same with Chrome Mox. Even though imprinting a Fable is not my favorite thing to do, I think I will do it. Um, that might even actually catch a Stifle if that's the case. It's just good to think about, like, basically when you're playing a game of Magic, in my, in my humble opinion, obviously I'm no, like, guru or anything, you should always be thinking as much ahead as possible. So the more you can kind of think about, oh, what if I draw this? What if I draw that? The better, uh, especially on Magic Online, where right now my opponent just has a stop on the upkeep and my opponent decided to go for a hot dog, right? So it's, it's just important to, to not just sit there. Second Vexing Bauble, what does that do for me? It makes it so that I can go double bauble turn one if I kind of sacrifice my mana base a little bit, I'm actually going to do that. Even though it's kind of a tough play to make, I think this is cool. I mean, just imagine the world where this gets forced and I play another one. That's amazing for me. 
Let's see. Obviously, Days is off the table for the first one, not off the table for the second one, but I think we take that if that's the case. So the most realistic outcome here is, or not outcome, but the most realistic scenario is my opponent has one force and they're thinking, if I counter this, will the game go long enough for me to see the, like, to see the, reap the fruits of that? Or is it just accept that force will is a dead card, but then I can use the other card, like whatever, dress down, stifle, brainstorm, ponder. Um, it's, a, it's an interesting decision here. And I think it was true when Chalice of the Void was unrestricted and vintage specifically. It's always like, do you force the first Chalice or do you just accept that your mox in hand is going to be dead and you have force for something else? What if my opponent has double Chalice? How big of a blowout is that? And this is just why it's good to, you know, answer ask your opponent tough questions if i go eruption into this one my opponent this decision is not as hard for the opponent and because of my draw step my plans changed and now i'm willing to like basically destroy my own mana base but the upside of getting this force and playing another one is just very big in my opinion so and i will play out a second one if this resolves then i'm just going to have a second bobble in play also, my opponent could play Prismatic Ending, so all of a sudden I'm kind of insulated against one of my opponent's answers. I don't know. Let's see. I, uh, I'm trying to fill in the, the opponent's waiting, or like thinking pauses here with, with relevant thoughts. I hope you guys appreciate it. I could have just, you know, paused the video and, uh, and that was it, but I actually think there's a lot, of, a lot, to, this, a lot to this decision from, from the opponent. So let's see. They hedged for Blood Moon, like I was hoping for, basically. Here's Consigned to Memory. So pretty decent run out for me here that I have the second. Could get dazed, don't forget. But this basically just... My opponent had no idea of knowing that I had a second one. Consigned to Memory is a cool one. Here's, here's the planes to basically confirm that <laughs> at least I like my sideboard configuration. This card could be cool later. Hmm, what should I play here? I'm actually leaning towards the One Ring. Is that nuts? Maybe it's a little nuts. Maybe it is a little nuts. Hmm. I'm actually gonna try and be uh, a big of as big of a boy as you can you can possibly imagine here and go the One Ring. So worth noting is Hardcast Days actually gets me here. I'm not a big fan of that, but let's see. Second consign would be brutal. Artcast Days is brutal. Force and negation in the opponent's hand is awesome for me. Uh, so since I have that one in play, I think I'll just take the protection. And then I'll just draw on my opponent's upkeep. I don't know what kind of anti-draw you could realistically play, but let's see. So here's Dress Down. I'm just going to draw. If I draw Spirit Guide, I will Pyroblast. Okay, so this is where things can get a little bit scary. So I obviously don't have any place here, so I can yield. And now, oh, the opponent did not have a Dreadnought. They did not find a third land. Wow, that's so lucky for me. That's so lucky. Okay, so draw with the ring. Spirit Guide is a cool one because it allows me to have um, basically back up if my opponent has something. Uh, yeah, I have to sacrifice that. So, Swords of Plowshares, I assume, is part of the equation here, which is why I just go Fable. If that gets plowed, I still have my enchantment. All of those good reasons we talked about earlier. When you're trying to sequence your threats, you have to imagine what's in the opponent's hand, and Swords of Plowshares is just very high on my list here. So, I'm playing out the threat that I care the least about getting plowed. Because I want to take over the game with that Rebel Master later. Let's see if the opponent can get into this game. Wasteland is for sure a card that gets the opponent into this game. Um, I do have a One Ring in play. My opponent decides it's good. So, worth noting is I'm taking a bunch of damage here. Um, but my opponent does not have access to Force of Will. And I might get a little bit of life back from all the plowing that's going on. But let's see. Red Elemental Blast is a good one. Oh, wow. I should have responded here. Kind of sleeping at the wheel here. That's not, that's not good. Um, 
a good player will draw three extra cards here to then have worse cards to choose from. Darn. Not not good. Not good. So I think City of Traders is not a very strong card here. Um, so maybe discard like City of Traders and Red Blast. I think that's decent. Uh, I'm sad about that one. So let's draw with the ring. And now I think it's Rabble time. So I play um, Ancient Tomb, Crack Spirit, uh, uh, yeah, Sack, uh, Exile Spirit Guide, rather. Have another one if things get iffy here. So Rebel Master. If my opponent hard cast days, I'm pretty happy trading it for a Spirit Guide. If my opponent plows it, we kind of just go again, right? Force of Will does not work. Rabble resolves. Will Rabble also trigger? Nope. Plow is the card. I can't play out my Chrome because of Vexing Bobble. Um, so I guess we pass. So now this is a kind of a game where I, I'm going to have an abundance of resources. So I'm basically just up against my own One Ring slash Ancient Tomb here. And my opponent also knows that's the name of the game. Bombardiers is a card that if it ever resolves and gets to attack, I can fling the one ring, and at that point it's all over. So now I go to 13. Let's see what I draw. Gemstone Cavern, not not exciting. I now have a fable on the battlefield, which is cool. Uh I don't, so right. Okay. Well, now I can think about stifling this, but I don't think that's how I'm supposed to play. Is it? If I go, hmm, then I have a then I have a clock. What if I draw in response? That'll probably educate my decision. These cards are <laughs> quite awesome. Um, hmm. If I protect this. I don't have protection for like Dreadnought Stifle, so I, and I think that's better. So I'm actually gonna accept this. Hmm. Now the question becomes: Should I go? Yeah, I should probably go like this. Let's see. Play, take a lot of damage. Bombardier. I guess don't plow me, bro. I get plowed here. Okay. Um. Got it. I go to 10 life. This is kind of brutal. So now I have to discard. So let's see. I mean, Ancient Tomb is likely not going to be it. Neither is Second Bauble. But maybe that's better than Chrome. They're kind of interchangeable, in a sense. Okay, let's get rid of that one. Maybe we just get rid of everything. Okay. Huh. So now, I'll, I'll go to six on my turn. As Flooded Strand hits the, the field here for my opponent. The problem about Gut is, it's, it's not really a hasty way to get rid of the ring. Wow, this is... Am I really losing here? That's some, that's that's terrible. Harbinger. Okay, so I guess I'm actually happy to see that card. So Harbinger. Let's see. Can I do anything cool here? I think what I can do now is I can go um get smashing into play untapped because of Harbinger. Then I can cast Gut. Then I can kill the Harbinger with Pyroblast. I think that's a good... Oh, I actually even have this one. Okay, so I can actually keep my Pyroblast. So, okay, I'm going to accept the Harbinger. I'm going to take the turn. I'm going to take four. This is getting iffy, that's for sure. Draw step. So, actually, for the time being, I don't care about the Harbinger. I can actually wait killing it. So let's see. Play one, two, three. Play my gut. 
What if my opponent attacks? Yeah, that's a problem. So I have to actually have to kill it now. Uh, should I draw five and look for Bombardier? Ah, oh, this game is so hard. This is actually an awesome game. I feel like I should draw five, because I don't think there's an actual difference if I go to one or two next turn, but drawing the five now could make a difference, so... A little bit of a bad sequence here for me. I should have drawn first before deploying the land. Let's draw. What can it be? Pyrogoyf is not a card that helps me right now. Basic Mountain is a card that can help me next turn. So, ah, oh, this is so bad. Let's gut. No, what? No, 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 no. Did I mess up? Oh, I just have to kill it first. Ah, oh, I thought I messed up there. Okay, so let's deal two. I think Pyroblast is more, is better, but is it really? Wow, this game is awesome. <laughs> so difficult. So let me just, let me just think a little bit here. So. Pyroblast my opponent's creature. That means I get to keep like the flexibility of a dead gone and pyroblast. Let's say if my opponent has a dress down, that card actually kind of crushes me, but it doesn't because I untap and pyroblast it. Hmm, so maybe I'm supposed to have an answer for dreadnought and an answer for dress down. So let's cast. Kill. And that doesn't work. I should have... Ah! I messed up, guys. I think I lost the game now. Ah! I almost got it right. Almost. <laughs> I, I should have floated a blue here. And I wish I had the... I wish I had the priority. If I float a blue here, I look like a genius. Wow. So, what happens here is, because I didn't float a blue, I'll now unlock my Ancient Tomb, which is a damage land that adds up with the One Ring to kill me. Um, and now I can't play Gut. I did not find a Spirit Guide. Next turn, I go to one. This is quite terrible. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm losing this game unless I find and resolve Bombardier next turn. For no reason here. If I float a blue, I play gut. That's a must answer. I go to one. If I ever get to attack, I fling the ring, and I'm out of, like, range, right? Darn. Okay. Okay. I only have two mana to work with. Can't do anything for two mana. Pass. Okay, very, very cool real-time learnings here, which is, you know, it's punishing for the wallet, but it's kind of awesome for educational purposes, I'll say. Um, so, yeah, I hope you guys enjoy learning with me, <laughs> with me on the job here. Um, let's see. Ancient Tomb is bad. Eruption, like there's some world where this card is useful later. Ugh. Yeah, that was so bad. Mm. Yeah, lots of small decisions here. The world was my oyster, oyster this game, and it was up to me. This was for me to lose. The Harbinger did make things a bit iffy, and I kind of got lost in the whole... I basically treated this as a Magus, and that confused me because I didn't have red mana, right? So... I have to discard three cards here, try and get back on track. Cavern just looks worse than, you know, Traders and um, Mountain. I guess the Eruption has to go now. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. I go to one, I draw. And I, the, the thing is, I need to draw a new ring there. Ponder the, the play here, which... So the thing about Ponder is... Ponder is helping my opponent find Plow, which kills me. Well, the, the thing is, the gut is not even doing anything, but killing the Bombardier that, I'm, that I need to draw is a thing. So I'm going to counter this. 
Even though it doesn't feel very good, but I'm going to counter that card. My opponent has two cards in hand. I expect that to be, like, creatures that the opponent could not cheat into play. Am I supposed to crack this bauble is another answer. Now that I just lost my Iroblast, I don't think I'm supposed to do that. Let's hang on to the bauble here. So I need to draw another ring. I need to draw Bombardier. So here goes nothing. Let's draw six cards. Let's see if we're on to the next game. It looks like we're on to the next game. The opponent actually, unless I spike something off the bauble, I think my opponent did it by plowing me a bunch of times and basically str putting on enough stress that I'm making uh, bad decisions. So let's see. Um, bunch of spirit guides in Chrome, which I like in theory, but I might not like <laughs> when, uh, well, I guess, yeah, I have to draw on this bauble, right? I just lose otherwise to the ring. Let's see if I, this is actually quite the achievement to lose this game. Like, I should be, I should, yeah, this is, this is cool. This is cool. This is going to be once in a lifetime losing a game like this on camera. So actually, I actually enjoy this quite a bit. <laughs> Um, more than I should, probably. So, let's see. Nothing to do here. Do I have any haste creature? I don't, because haste creature... With, like, let's just say I had a rabble master. I could play that and gut out of one, two, three, four, man, I five, six, yeah, so... No creature to get into combat. I don't get any extra points for having all the pyrogoyphs in the world. And, uh, yeah, I think I just, I just lose here. All right, that's going to be a tough one. Drawing how many cards with the ring? Six? Like, drawing maybe, I don't know, 15, 20 cards. Um, I'm just trying to look through my hand once more. I think this is just GG's. I mean, I have everything else aside from ring, bombardier, and rebel master, so... Okay, okay, okay. I'm gonna, yeah, this is gonna go to a game, game three very, very surprisingly, but that is what's gonna happen here. So, I don't think I'm supposed to make adjustments. I still like my setup. I like the blasts, I like the bobbles. I like not having the variants of Blood Moon, even though they can be useful. Um,. Yeah, I mean, let's let's run it back and try and try and do better in the next game than we did the previous. Wow. Okay, I need to collect my thoughts here because that game is going to ha haunt me for a while. So what did I do wrong in that game? Yeah, floating the mana. Floating from Ancient Tomb. Then I play the gut. My opponent needs the plow. Yeah, definitely. So funnily enough, I lose to the fourth plow in that spot even. Um, I don't lose to dress down because I had pyro. Yeah, that was just amazing. So in that spot, I had two rings, three or four bombardiers, three or four rabble masters. I was drawing towards those eight, I believe. Which, to be fair, isn't that much. Um... I mean, drawing six cards is obvi I'm obviously a favorite to hit them, but it's not like I'm an I'm an overwhelming favorite. It was it was iffy. All right, let's see game three here for the <laughs> for the trophy. Definitely a cool one, no matter how this one ends up. Um, yeah, I mean, this hand looks decent. Question is, if I'm holding up against turn one ponder. Uh, yeah, let's keep this hand and hope for the best. Wow, great game. Uh, I don't think holding up Pyroblast turn one is that useful. I think I prefer it for later. There's even a chance I delay my plan further, but let's see about that. So my opponent's draw right now could be representing consign, could be representing... Um, wow, I'm just going to pass here. 
the fact that this is a city of traders and not an ancient tomb, I think it's decent way to play like this, but let's see. I almost paid Solitaire. I definitely paid the price after playing Solitaire, that's for sure. But that's that's how you should play the game. Like there's a non zero chance that the, your mono red opponent is not good enough to win with drawing fifteen extra cards. And uh that's why you should play out the game if you like if you want to do that every time you're gonna play against some someone like me, and then you're gonna reap the rewards of that, and then let's say, I don't know, ninety-eight percent of the time or whatever, you just get crushed. So that's totally up to you. I actually saw a discussion on Twitter recently where like the argument that decks like Nadu, Lantern, maybe there's one more that kind of um those play patterns are not fun because it's like 99% to lose, so it feels bad to concede, feels bad to not concede, stuff like that, right? So my opponent goes for second island there. What does that tell me? That basically tells me my opponent is not interested in um, losing to Blood Moon, which is totally fair. Now I can only... Okay, I was about to say I can only dream of catching something like a Dreadnought Stifle to situation here. So, Smashing is a decent draw. Now I can go Rabble. Let's see. Rabble Master. Cool thing is my opponent does not have white mana, so this has to be Hydro Blast or has to be, like, Force of Will. But let's see. It could be just Hydro Blast. Dress Down in Response. Hmm. I don't think I mind a Dress Down in Response. I'm actually going to let my opponent do that. So that means no Goblin for me, and I'm going to pass. But the dress down is going to die end of turn, which makes it not an enabler for, for stupid things over there. Like, to be fair, I haven't seen Dreadnoughts yet, have I? I don't, I'm not sure. So here's Swords to Plowshares, which is very annoying. Here's Ponder that I'm going to let resolve, because next turn I want to go... Um, smashing load mana from city, play the one ring with pyroblast backup, and then I want to try another crack at it, which is funny. Worth noting is my opponent cannot uh, replicate consign, so this is decent. Oh, there's actually a reason I'm, uh, there's actually an argument I'm supposed to, you know, this is a good spot to, uh, to get on the board with another rabble. My opponent can't hold up plow, my opponent might need to force This is a weird situation where it's going to cost me a lot of life to slow roll the smashing, but it's also going to enable... Oh, what is this? Stifling the 1-1? One -one? Sure. Okay, th th this game is kind of weird. So, the question is, am I getting harbingered? Is that what's going on? Harbinger would be annoying because I lose to backup, basically. And my deck doesn't play all that many um, basic mountains. I do have, I guess, Simeon Spirit Guide and Chrome, so maybe it's not that bad. This, is, this game is interesting. Let's see. I'm trying to poke a hole in the opponent's defense with these plays where I don't, you know, I don't sacrifice my Cedar Traders. I don't pay three life. I don't... I don't invest a lot, so I actually like those threats quite a bit. So the opponent fetched a basic prematurely, which tells me they have another play, but um, thought better of it. Okay, so I guess we we can continue down this path. I actually think it's, it's quite reasonable. Um, if this resolves, now could be the time to play out Smashing. But I mean, my opponent likes using Stifles on different stuff, so... The reason why I'm saying that is then I have double red to, you know, shoot the Harbinger for two. And um Pyroblast back up if my opponent has something weird here, because I now have, well, presumably I have a flow of treasure coming in and I can, you know, dig into my deck. Let's see what this is. End of turn. Cycle Lauren reveals definitely not a scary play. We take those. Um, I have some decent answers in hand, and I have a big haymaker that can kind of take over the game. Uh, my opponent does play Consigned to Memory, which, you know, if you replicate it, Pyroblast doesn't do anything as a backup spell. So, 
I like it when I can just play these three drops out. I feel like the game is not going to get out of hand, and I have pretty good, um, like I have, you know, if my opponent plays Doorkeeper Thrall, I can kill it. If my opponent plays Harbinger, I can kill it. If my opponent manages to resolve Dreadnought Stifle, I can first interact with Pyroblast, then I can fire a Confluence. Like, I'm pretty well set up against that kind of stuff. Opponent gets back Stifle here, so that tells me that something is cooking over there. Let's see if there's a cantrip. Oh, it's like Null Drifter into... Okay, it's not. That card is dead. And then next turn, I guess my opponent can do that. Okay. Next turn, something bad is going to happen to me. I guess I just Pyroblast the Stifle and take it from there. This turn can be tough. Smashing. Hmm. So the thing is... And I have to consider, what am I opponent trying to set up? It looks like the Fiery Confluence is not a great card. But the rest of these cards are, which is kind of funny. So let's get rid of Confluence. I drop Bombardier. Wow. Hmm. So I guess I play that, take the damage, play Bombardier, and attack for two. This threat is not anything to write home about, but it's fine to get it into play. Babel is going to flip. Like it, The opponent will have to deal with it eventually. So interestingly enough, the opponent took back Stifle and not Dress Down. So what does that tell me? Okay, here's Dress Down, end of turn. My opponent has a Stifle in hand. Why would the opponent want both? I think this is worth a Pyroblast, counter-target spell if it's blue. Hmm. Now the opponent draws to Stifle, which is super confusing. It is kind of bad news for me, though. Yeah, it's even the good one. But I guess that is something that I can kill with Bombardiers. The opponent draws two cards, Stifle set so it stays in play. Plays land. I now flip my Fable, and Stifle cards are kind of back on, which is very annoying. Defending player. Unfortunately, not target player. So the One Ring does not work against Annihilation. They draw Gut, which is also a good card. Hmm. I feel like I should play that card. Kind of cool that I got Stifle out of the way. Let's see. Gut, True Soul, Sell It. Um, so, let's see. Attack with that one. Now the question becomes, do I want a Skeleton? I think I do. So I sacrifice the Reflection. Is that true? Let's see if this works. If I sacrifice that, I get in for six menace, and then I can fling the gut to kill the Null Drifter. I'm bad against Stifle, but I feel like I have to do this. Um, that one turns into a skeleton. This is six menace damage. And then I try and kill the Null Drifter. Okay. Yes, that works. Uh, menace. Take six. Kill that. Fling the gut. Should have dealt five to my opponent. Unclear what's better. Let's see. That card hits the bin. Now it's up to my opponent to deal with my board. I have two threats that are annoying for the opponent. Let's see what this is. Could be another Null Drifter. Be quite annoying. Okay. Null Drifter it is. The opponent draws two cards, and then the question basically becomes if they find a Stifle effect to keep it around. It's like they did. Signed a memory. Counter a trigger. Counter the evoke. Pretty cool play. Wasteland is a card that keeps me from the One Ring, so it's not, it's not bad. Um... Just float here for good measure. So worth mentioning is that this is still 6 damage unblockable. 
Let's see. Land would be fine. Pyroblast, funnily enough, does not do a whole lot here. Um, let's attack with those boys. Double menace once more. The opponent let me attack. That means no plow. When it's at four life. I don't think I'm supposed to fling the skeleton. That just makes sorts to plowshares into a beating of a card. So funnily enough, my opponent goes to three here, and that is not going to hurt them. I can still only do two. Here's Meticulous Archive. Thankfully for me, lots of my opponent's combacks here are, you know, blue. So there's that. Um, Wasteland is annoying. Well, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. What if I bounce the Null Drifter here? What's going to happen? Can I lose to a blue card? That's basically what I'm asking. Hmm, I think I'm kind of all, all in here. If my opponent attacks, I lose a land. My opponent can also wasteland me. And then all of the defense I have is a blast and a dead gone. So I guess we lose that card. Then I lose that card. Then I'm down to a single mountain. Very interested to see what my opponent can do here. Two cards, and I have blue... Uh fixed basically so it looks like my opponent's my opponent drew plow oh that's all that's maybe something that saves my opponent here's petty theft counter target spell if it's blue so i'm basically asking if my opponent has one more piece of interaction here which they will need <clears throat> The opponent has announced the GGs, and uh, that means we take down the 5-0 the here with Mono Red Prison, and uh, wow, that was quite the run. Um, really enjoyed those games. I'm also happy that I made some mistakes that allowed for more learning to surface, and um, yeah, I mean, that's just what you're looking for. You're looking to win, of course, that's awesome, but we're looking to get better every time we play, and that was definitely the case here. I definitely wasn't used to playing, you know, very damage-based, mana-based compared with the one ring, drawing a ton of cards, and then how do I, like, counteract the variance by playing in certain ways? How do I, you know, I've never had Harbinger of the Season play when I'm playing Mono Red Prison and before, so... A little bit of like, I had an idea what I had to do, but I couldn't execute and uh, I lost a very close game two as a result. Um, and then I won a very close game three after, you know, cool plays and uh, kind of thorough usage of pyroblasts. I love having access to all of those pyroblasts, by the way, and that's not possible in a chalice build. So I really like the vexing bubble. It even got countered once or twice and then it did some. You know, I'm, all, I'm all always saying it gets invisible value. When the opponent doesn't play out stuff, like, who knows what's in the hand, right? So, all in all, incredibly impressed with Monored Prison uh, in, in this new metagame. And, uh, yeah, the result does not lie here. 5-0, and oh, pretty awesome uh, performance. Even though I didn't play perfectly, I did have, you know, good draws and I, and I played well, but I did not play perfectly. And, uh, yeah, the deck bailed me out. So, uh, whew. That's going to do it for this week of Legacy. Uh, next week, I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do, but I hope you guys enjoyed the Legacy content, and I hope to see you back on the channel. Thanks so much for watching.